minutes to establish this. So, till now we have seen two different problems, atmospheric and solar. Atmospheric, we got a solution in terms of oscillation between two neutrons, numeric and neutron. Of solar, we got a solution in terms of two neutron oscillations, numeric and numeric and neutron. We don't know what combination. Of course, we know that there are three neutrinos. So, although these two seem to be two neutron oscillations, actually, whatever happens should be in terms of three neutron oscillations. So, what we will try to do today is try to fit the solar and the atmospheric solution in terms of two neutron oscillations. So, in terms of two neutron oscillations. But, Solar, 
or the large device which is attached to atmosphere. So they can either be stacked like this or they can be stacked like this and I will go through. Because all I have told you is what is the value of data x. So this is called as normal ordering. This is called as movable ordering. What is dual nu2 and nu3? Physically, you can see that these two are in fact independent. Point. This is also sometimes called as normal hierarchy. So you will notice both uh, conventions. Sometimes they are for ordering, sometimes they are for hierarchy. So we'll, we'll try to see, you know, I cannot say anything about it now, and I can say something about it. So, so <laughs> these two are hierarchies. Okay, this is normal hierarchy, inverted hierarchy. So you don't need to look at it so carefully right now. The same picture will be in bigger format in terms of this. Okay, and we'll see exactly what these colors are. Last slide it plays us. So we will also tell you ideas to that. Okay. So understand that they start with general formalism of the universe. So first convention. It was very important to define what I can have. So firstly, we are going to mix level eigen states to mass eigen states. Okay. Give you down to one, two, three. First, we should, need, we should define what is new 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 tau and new 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 So let's go straight. Level eigen states, we already saw in the beginning. Okay. New e is something that interacts with matter that gives out an electron. Okay. Similarly, new e bar would be something that interacts with matter that gives out a positive. New mu is something that gives out mu. New tau is something that gives out tau. Okay. So this is our definition of level eigen states. What about mass eigen How we are going to be careful because we have new one, new two, new three, and we haven't defined either of them yet. So this is the consistent way of defining. So first we define new three. Now remember we draw these two these three eigenstates of n square. Two of them were close together. One was farther away. The one which was farther away took part in the oscillations of atmospheric motion. One farther away was related to the other two by data as per atmosphere. Okay, which means that this one takes part in the atmospheric motion of Similarly, this is the case, this one takes part in the atmospheric motion of This can be called as mu3. Therefore, in the case of normal ordering, mu3 will be the heaviest state. In the case of inverted ordering, mu3 will be the lightest. Therefore, is that state that does not take part in the solar oscillations. Now, I define two states, new one and new two. The definition so, new one and new two will take part in solar oscillations. Now, the definition or the convention is that new two is the heavier state, new one is the lighter state. Can be other way around? It's good to use proper convention with some well defined convention. Therefore, I'm getting these conventions. How do you know which is new one and which is new? Okay. Let's say you are given this, you are given those numbers. Okay. Now, I first told you that new 3 is the one which does not take part in solar. So, we agree that new 3 is this. In this case, new 3 is this. Okay. Now, you have to these two. Which take part in solar oscillation. Okay. Now ask which is new one, which is new. At some point you should say which is A, which is B. No? Then you get talk about fixing angles A and B. So right now this is simply a question of definition and convention. Okay? And a good convention that I find very useful. So if you go to papers 10 years ago, there is a lot of confusion between new one and new two. 
you can talk about angles, whether they range from 45 degrees, from 30 degrees and so on. What I'm giving you is the consistent convention which always works. So the convention says, so like in that picture, actually in a, in a solar neutral oscillation, so there is no difference between the higher arguments. If you neglect new 3, so new 1 and new 2, so there is no difference between hierarchical spectrums, which hierarchy, whether it is normal or uh, in that doesn't matter. Because this doesn't come into play at all. Right? So then I say that u2 is heavier, u1 is lighter. Even in this case. Therefore, now u2 is heavier, u1 is lighter. So note that if you go from lower to higher state, this is u1, u2, u3. But for inverted hierarchy, we have got u3, u1, u2. So this is something important. But so that's the definition of new one you do. So now we know what is our basis of level eigenstates. We know what is the basis for mass eigenstates. So now, uh, let's see what you can say about delta n square. So firstly, delta n square solar should be delta n square between new 2 and new 1. Because new 3 is anyway doesn't take part in solar. So therefore, delta n square solar value is equal to m2 square minus m1 square which is delta m square to 1. Therefore, we know, okay, another thing is because we defined m2 greater than m1, delta m square so 2, 1 is 0 by definition. So, so this is simply by definition. This is for normal order. How did we define 2 and 1? New 2 is always heavy. Okay. This is always true. So therefore, this is always positive. So for delta n square 2, 1, we know the magnitude, which is 8 times 10 power minus 5, and we know the sign, which is positive. Now let's go to atmosphere. The entire atmosphere is defined in many ways. Okay, so let me tell you. This is one good definition. So you say it's m3 square minus the average of m1 square and m2 square. But now you see that uh, m2 square and m1 square are almost close together. Okay, so this is 20 times larger times. This difference is about 20 times so I can say that this delta n square is almost equal to m3 square minus m2 square. Or I can say it's almost equal to m3 square minus m1 square. Okay? So again you will see many conventions in relation, okay? but this is the good one. m3 1 square by definition is m3 square minus m1 square. m3 2 square by definition is m3 square minus m2 square. And we can always say that delta n square 3 1 is nearly equal to delta n square 3 2 is nearly equal to delta n square 2 So therefore, we know what is the magnitude of delta n square 2 which is some 2 times 10 power minus 3 delta n square What we do not know is the sign of delta n square 2 okay. See, for solar, we knew the sign because it was by definition For atmospheric, we cannot use this so we don't know the sign. In fact, if you go back to the p mu mu in the atmospheric case, what you find? The p mu mu is 1 minus sine square 2 theta mixing angle times sine square of delta square atmospheric h by 4. Now if I change the sign of delta square atmospheric, p mu mu stays the same. So therefore, I have no knowledge about what this and what the sign of this delta is. This is the same as saying that in this particular diagram, I have no clue if u3 is higher or u3 is low. This corresponds to saying that uh, delta n square atmospheric is positive. This is saying that delta n square atmospheric is negative. And I have no clue which is okay, at least at this point of view. So otherwise, you will only do neutral oscillations, you will not know whether delta n square atmospheric is positive or negative. So 
now from the question of DC. So we have a three vector u e u e u tau and a three vector u one u two. So you want to rotate this three vector to the other three. So basically, it's like a basis x y z going to another basis x y y z. And you have a rotation matrix, which is three by three. So if you think only in terms of uh, Euler angles, it's three Euler angles. However, in general, this can be complex because uh, u1, u2, u3, no one tells you that there should be real combinations of the u1. So let's start by assuming that these elements are complex. And I will call them simply as u e1, u e2, u e3, which basically would mean that if I want to write u e, it will be u e1 times u1 plus u e2 times u2 plus u e3 times u3. So this element just gives you what fraction of u1. So, what fraction of u e is in u1, u2, and u3? So, this is the last time we wrote this, we were trying to look at oscillations of two neutrinos. So, this matrix we wrote down cos theta, sin theta, minus sin theta, cos theta. Then we started with a level eigenstate like u mu and see what happened when we evolved in time. So, what we will do now? Is do the same thing, but now we won't write cos theta sin theta. We will write u1 u2 u3. Let's see what happens. So, so let's say you start with the flavor eigenstate alpha. So give me one. So at t equal to zero, it's simply equal to u alpha one times u1 plus u alpha two times u2 plus u alpha three times u3. What we did. Now what will happen? We let these three mass eigenstates propagate. And when mass eigenstates propagate, they basically gain some phase okay, proportional to n square by 2e. So this propagate. So nu alpha at e will be nu alpha 1 nu 1 times this phase. Nu alpha 2 will get this phase. Nu alpha 3 nu 3 will get this phase. Very simple. Now, we want to figure out after time t how much of this state needs some flavor eigenstate beta. So, it's like we started with nu nu, propagated, try to see how much of that has now become nu tau. Beta can be equal to or not equal to, doesn't matter, just take some mass eigenstate. So, what happens? So, I take this state, nu alpha at t. And I project it out to some state, new bit, particular. So what do I get? I write this new beta in terms of my new one, new two. New. So this new beta, since this is a graph, this will become new star beta one. Sorry, new star beta one times new one, new star beta two times new two, and new star beta two times new three. So when I take inner product, this is what I get u beta 1 star u alpha 1 times the phase, u beta 2 star u alpha 2 times this phase, and u beta 3 times u alpha 3 times this phase. Now, we want to calculate what is the mod square of this. Because the probability of u alpha going to u beta. So I have to take the square of this one. So let's see how we get this. Uh, so this is, I wrote this thing again, which is the inner product. I have to take mod square of this. So there will be mod square of this, u beta 1 star u alpha 1 mod square. Similarly for 2 and for 3. Then I take cross terms. So cross term would be if I take this times star of this. I will get u 
beta 1 star q alpha 2 q alpha 2 is here q beta 2 and u alpha 1 star This time, this I will get the first term plus I will get a complex conjugate by star of this time this term. So I get some long expressions, maybe six such cross terms. Each of the term will have something that looks like m2 square minus m1 square by 2 b times here. So now I want to simplify this expression which looks rather complicated. We need a simple notation. The notation is the following. You always get this combination. U alpha j, u beta j, u alpha j star, u beta i star. So wherever you see this quantity, yeah. So here u beta 1, u alpha 2, u beta 2, u alpha 1. Two of them are stars. So therefore, all this quantity always look be of this form. This I call it a packet. Okay, so this square is often called as a plan. A simple definition. Now if I write it as this packet, it looks like the mod squares, which are the first three terms, which exactly are the ones that I copied from here. Now, look at the second line. This part is just packet. So the packet times e to the power some value of 2 data. So this is data n square by only times 2. Plus, there is a complex conjugate, which means 2 times real. So if we do that, this is what we get. We have a Now I do some manipulations. 
exactly similar to what I did in the interval. Two okay. 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 I keep these three terms the same. And I see how I write this real part of bracket times the part one. So maybe you have very simple expression. So I want some real part of uh, A times B. Then A and B are complex numbers. So then I have to agree with me the real part of A times B is the real part of A, real part of B, minus imaginary part of A, imaginary part of A. So therefore, if I have two complex numbers, then this is how I take the real part of them. So I go back. So look at this term. I should be able to write it as real part of bracket real part of phase minus imaginary part of bracket imaginary part of phase. So this is exactly what I do now. This is real part of bracket, real part of phase capture minus imaginary part of bracket, imaginary part of phase capture. This is just phase factor is simply cos minus i times i. So cos plus i. And now, of course, this is 1, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3. So I short form this as i less than j and summation. This basically is 1, 2, 1, 3, and 2, 3. So now I do the next step. Okay, so let me write this term now. So this is I use a trick similar to the one I used before. See this part, cos 2 i delta i j, 
as separated into 1 and 1 minus cosine. Okay. And that's because I know that 1 minus cosine will be sine squared. Okay. Okay. So this was this was a trick. Once I do that, I can combine these two lines. So can you see what these two lines give me? The first two lines. No, first is always never, other is always uh, second is always So they get this side. So I write my U as U E one U E three U one U two. You can tell me what is u of alpha is star u beta i. So it's an i, perhaps u to star up. So this is, so this is going to be i, so 1, 1, 1. So therefore, u alpha is star u beta i is equal to 1 if alpha is equal to beta, it's 0 if alpha is equal to beta. So delta alpha. That was the reason for doing this thing. So I can combine these two terms and I get this. This is equal to delta. So what I have now? I have delta alpha beta minus the real part of the bracket times 1 minus cosine, which is sine square of it. Minus, so plus the imaginary part of it. So now what happens is this quantity has now given me one delta alpha beta. The one minus cos two i delta i j gives me two sine square. That two multiplied with this two gives me four sine square. So then I get four sine square times the real part of the okay. This minus sign is because we have a minus sign. The third term, I just copy it down the way. 
Therefore, if you start by the state mu alpha, and you want to see how much of it has become state mu beta to time t, the answer is this. So this is some of a master equation. So this is again something that one should have plastered on one's goal. So this is something that you will use all the time. So in the shorthand form, it can be written like this, with data gi defined as this, over here. Neutrinos is 
it seems advisable that you stick to the convention that is followed by everyone. Okay, because everything depends on that. So the convention is the following. You, it has three rotations. Those apply rotation in the one two plane, then in one three plane, then in two three. Okay, it can be shown that these basically can this can represent all your parameters in some ways. So, rotation in the 1 2 plane means the matrix that looks like this. So, in the 1 2 plane, it rotates like this by cos sin sin minus sin cos with the 1 in the 1 3, in the 1 in the 3 3 position. For 1 3, it basically means that rotation is in the 1 3 plane, and 2 3 means 2 3 rotation with 1 in the other hand. So this is convention. Turns out that this is a convention extremely useful for the case of the okay. If it's other convention, it will be correct, but then uh, correspondence with the solar atmospheric solutions is not okay. It's a good convention because as you will see in the next 10 minutes, uh, in this convention, it is very easy to give good intuitive meanings to the angles that are working. The reason for the convention is in the result that it gives, not anything else. So, you know, multiply these three matrices, and you will get a matrix that looks like this. As we come to this matrix, in the next 10 minutes, we will come back to this matrix about 10 minutes. So, now, now that we have parameter this matrix with three angles, Angles are theta 1, 2, theta 2, 3, and theta 1, 3. So now we try to go back to the solar solution, atmospheric solution, and we try to figure out what are these angles. See, till now what we got is something we called as theta solar, or something we called as theta atmospheric. Okay. We never said anything about what it would be. We did not try to parameter theta. Theta solar was the So, let's try to match these angles with uh, solar atmospheric okay. We already have matched delta x squares. Delta x square 2 1 was solar, other two delta x squares were like atmosphere. So, this we are done. The question now is to how to do with the angles. You 
no energy approximately. You know, they are giant square approximately. So you can find out what is the energy. You choose your n such that delta 3 2 is nearly 1. This you can do. Okay. If delta 3 is of the order of 1, delta 2 1 will be 1 over 30. It's a small quantity. What does this mean? Now, in this complicated expression, I am not concerned about the third part because it is imaginary. If you look here, I am going to get all these sine squares. Sine square delta 3 1, delta 3 2, delta 2 1. Now, if sine square delta 2 1, delta 2 1 is 1 by 30. Sin square delta 2 1 is 1 over 900. So that's very small. Okay, so 0.1 percent, so you forget it. That is the reason when you do reactive neutral experiments, you always choose delta 3 2 of the order of 1. So delta 2 1 is very, very small. You can neglect So see what happens. So I use the master equation, which was. So now, when alpha and beta are both e, so this p, so this becomes u e1 times u e2 times u e1 star u e2 star. So I get mod u e1 square, mod u e2 square, and sine square of delta 2. Similarly, I will get if I take 2 and 3, then u e2 square, u e3 square, and sin square delta 3 2, and u e1 square, u e3 square, sin square delta 3 2. This is the standard expansion of that, the thing. So now what happens? I get three terms. After of which now I know that. This term is extremely small, sin square delta 2 1. Small by factor of 1000. So I forget this term. So this term is not related. So I only have these two terms. So I see what I can write in this. So this is 1 minus 4. I have got u e3 square is common, so I have term u e3 square. Now, sin square delta 3 2 is nearly equal to sin square delta 3 2. So, this point is sin square delta 3 2, okay, because we can neglect this point. Okay, so, I shall also call this as sin square. First term gives me mod u e2 square, the second term gives me mod u e1 square. So 
this is. Other species rather than disappearance of electrons. 
put yourself in a student experiment. Okay? You have a new bar flux of 3 mA. What will you observe? You cannot observe muons because you have 3 mA experiment. You have to observe tau. You have to observe it. Yeah, but for a, for a good experiment, you will be observing whether something is appear in the large signal. Both have their own benefits. Okay. Here, benefit is that reactors exist. They produce many particles. If you want to do anything with reactor, you have to make a disabled experiment because you cannot produce mu and tau with MEV energy. Okay. So there is no choice. Next choice would be to actually build a source of mu bar, which is much more difficult than this. So you notice the Kalman experiment was also a reactor experiment. It was a disabled experiment. It did succeed in finding oscillations. Okay. So it's not that disappearance are inherently bad. No, uh, what I was saying is for such a small angle. For such a small angle, it is a very It was built, there were two more diagonals. So there is a reactor, you build the experiment, you see what the angle turns out to be. People would have been very happy if the, react, if the rate was less than 1, the result was not 1. But the result was 1, so what can you do? Okay. In spite of that, this is considered to be one of the very successful experiments. Simply because it gave you a count on this particular parameter. So you observed zero value of disappearance, which told you that this coefficient, because u3 squared times 1 minus u3 squared, was less than 0.05. So there are, of course, some errors, some error paths, which can't take. So you can't have quantity equal to zero, but it has more. So upper bound was about 0.05, plus it will be 0, but still you can have it from 1. Okay. So what this means is either u3 squared is less than 0.05, or u3 squared is more than more than 0.95, because either way it is. So theta 1, 3 therefore would be either very small, so sine squared theta 1, 3 which is u3 squared, either it's less than 0.05 or greater than 0.9. So all of them is true. So once the reactor experiment was done, this is what you do. So out of theta 1 3 is such that theta 1 3 squared, sine squared theta 1 3 is less than 0.05 or greater than 0.9. So you keep it at this at the back of my mind, and then you go to atmospheric. So what is the atmospheric? The atmospheric one is also very, very similar. Uh, in the atmosphere, if you calculate the value of delta 3, 1, delta 3, 2, it is of the order of 1. Okay, you make this, some of these plots with uh, in the assignment with matrix E Yeah. So, point 2 is, of course, you will see many oscillations. Yes. Okay. 2, you observe a few oscillations, maybe one or two. 2 GV is where the atmospheric neutrino flux peaks. So you observe 1, 2, 3 oscillations maximum. Which means that delta 3, 1 is nearly equal to 1, 2, 3 of the order of 1. So delta 3, 2 is of the order of 1 means that delta 2, 1 is very, very small. So therefore, you can neglect delta 2, 1. So we can do exactly what we did earlier. So atmospheric case. Now we don't have electron to electron like for reactor case. Now we have muon to muon. For atmospheric ones, what we observe is this no? survival probability of muons, E mu mu. So again, maybe the demand is of packet again. Packet was u alpha i u beta j star. Some stars, but we'll get back to the moment. Right now, we are in here. So, for P mu mu, you can choose ij equal to 1 and 2, and you get 1 minus 4 times u mu 1 square, u mu 2 square, sine square delta 2 1. Then you get the 2 3 combination, so u mu 2 square, u mu 3 square, 
and sin square delta 3 2. And then you get u1, u3, and delta 3. <coughs> Again, do the same process as we did before. Forget about delta 2 1 dot. So, get rid of this that. Take delta 3 2 equal to delta 3 1 approximately. So again you get something that looks like one minus four u square times sine square of delta one times now we get Sin square theta atmosphere times 
sides to the data. Language of two three, we see that all the other parameters, this became three two and this became two three. Therefore, two three must be the same as the atmosphere. So therefore, it is not a surprise that even though the mixing is in terms of three neutrinos, when we looked at atmospheric neutrino problem. We essentially had only two neutral losses. It's approximate answer, but it's still a good intuitive basis. So, data atmosphere that we have got earlier was just equal to theta cruise. Right, so, uh, it's not correct to say like that the electron neutral one doesn't take part in neutral losses. It's a bit off. We are saying in terms of mass eigenscales, then we can say only neutral. Because of the approximation that we use. Yeah. Yes. We can so, talk it in uh, clever eigenstates. And in terms of mass eigenstates, we can rule out one based on our assumption. Because we neglect the delta 2 1 compared to delta 3 2. If we do delta 2 1, then of course there is some correction. So in fact, those corrections. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this is true only in the case where theta 1 3 goes to 0 and theta 2 1 goes to 0. As soon as you make theta, theta 1 3 non 0 and theta 2 1 non 0, you will get many more. But the first approximation is okay. This is because the experiments you need for atmospheric neutrinos, our spectrum will accurate to of the order of 10 percent, like other than 10 percent. As long as the error is 10 percent, you can get away by neglecting this. Once you go and do experiment with error of the order of 2 percent, then you have to worry about these corrections. So, we will talk about this. So, all the future experiments are the ones that expect to have accuracy of the order of uh, 2 percent, let's say. And therefore, you need to take into account all these corrections. Okay, at this point, we can take it. What in the next 5 years? So this is the atmospheric case. So finally, the answer is very simple. Thanks to the good parameterization of theta 1, 2, theta 2, three, theta 1. So therefore, theta 2, 3 is simply theta atmospheric. And we know what its value is. Now let's go to solar. So this is solar. Uh, we have to be slightly careful because it has matter in this. Let's see what we do. So remember this. Your E mu and tau, where mu1, mu2, mu3 multiplied by three rotations. Let's go to this limit when R13, when theta13 is here. Simplify your things. I did So R13, I did now, on top of that, I'll give you a new basis, which I call it as mu e, mu x, mu one. You will soon realize why. This basis is mu e, mu e, mu tau, rotated by r23 dagger of theta 2. So it's like rotating the basis back by angle theta 2. Now I want to write down my equations in terms of this basis, mu e, mu x, and mu one. So what happens? I have this equation. Instead of writing mu e mu 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 tau, I write down r two three times mu e mu x mu one. Okay, so let me write this. I want to write down mu e mu x mu one. That's equal to r two three dagger times mu e mu 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 tau. So, which is R23 dagger times this part. So, that is R23 times theta 2 3. This is identity, so that doesn't matter. R12 and theta 1. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mathematically, I agree that I can do this. Okay. 
I is just to be done, you will understand the next subject. Okay, right now I just give you a mathematical question. I change my basis. Why? Because you know, I know something about it. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a post hoc. Okay, but we agree that my unique numerics in Dubai is simply R over 2 times the human numerics. It's a limit that I do want to So I will write this. So V nu x to y is R12 times u1 nu2 nu3. Now you see what has happened. U3 is equal to u y and it doesn't take part in mix. So u3 has decoupled completely. Okay. Look at this mixing. You will realize that u3 is not taking part in this mixing at all. So what did I do? I knew that U3 was a state which is not supposed to take part in this mixing. I chose a careful basis such that that U3 decouples. This basis, I get one state which does not take part in solar oscillations. Turned out that the state was very simple to write down. It was simply some rotation. But what does the rotation give me? It gave me that u3 decouples, which is exactly what I want, and I can write down mixing between u e and u x as u3 u e u x is cos 1 2 sin 1 2 minus sin 1 2 cos 1 2 of u1 2. So what has happened? Because of these two bases, I succeeded in doing two things simultaneously. I decoupled u3, which is what I wanted, which doesn't take part in the solar oscillations, and I found out those two flavor eigenstates which take part in solar oscillation. Remember, I told you that nu e in the solar case goes to nu mu nu tau, some combination, and they have no cubish combination. Now we know which combination. Because this tells us that solar oscillations are oscillations between nu e and nu x only. Therefore, the answer to the question as to what does we go to the solar limit oscillation is U3 goes to 2x. Here you see some combination of U3 and Uta, which is how we know what we And once we know mu e and ux, we know what the mixing angle is. Theta 1, 2. So, so it is true that mixing angle is theta 1, 2, but to arrive at that, we have to use this specific basis. Now what do we have? Now we know that theta 1, 2 is the same as theta solar. In the grid, theta, uh, the solar analysis, we assume mixing angle of theta solar. Okay, which means we say that UV and some other state mix with angle theta 1, 2, which is exactly what's happening. So therefore, now we know that theta 1, 2 is, is theta solar. And we know that oscillations of solar are one are between nu e and nu x. What is nu x? You can get nu x from this. You find nu x. See here, let us say r 2 3 dagger, nu e has stayed nu e. It is simply a rotation. So you can actually also find out what is the value of it. So it is only a very particular combination of nu e and nu tau that takes part in the solar oscillation. And that combination is called as nu x. Nu x nu y is a notation that is again not very prevalent in books. In fact, many people don't even mention it, and some people just call it nu mu. So, but to be correct, I think one should always use this nu x nu y notation. So I encourage you to use nu x notation. So now we basically have solved our problem. So now we can fix all our solar and atmospheric neutrino observations into this framework of three neutrinos. So three neutrinos means you have three mass eigenstates. We know what is the mass square difference between two one, that's eight times the power minus five, and we know it is positive. So for definition, it's not physics, just definition. We know 
what is delta s square atmospheric? Which is the same as delta s square 3 1 and 3 2. That's approximately equal to 2.5 times 10 power minus 3 electrons. Note that we don't know what the size is. In mixing angles, we decide to write down mu alpha as product of three rotations times mu i. These are mass angle states of pure angles. Approximately, we know that theta 1 3 is 0. Approximately, we know that theta 2 3 is theta atmospheric. This approximation is theoretical, this approximation is experimental. Again, when theta 1 3 equal to 0, Theta 1 3 is equal to theta soda. This approximation is theoretical. This is experimental. So, therefore, now we know how to write the relative in terms of three neutrons. So, here is the relative come back to this big figure again. Now we can understand what this figure is. What the colors are. So, red color is mu e, green is blue mu, and blue is mu chop. So, mu1, mu2, mu3. So look at mu3 first. So we know that in mu3, mu e has a very small component. So mu e is be squared. So this here it should be e squared. That's of the order of space process. Less than 0.25. So I just draw some smaller. Okay, it doesn't matter the exact. This Green part should be u mu see this is a mu three state. So the next term muon tau. So green part must be so this is u tau. This is going to be e one square. This will be e one square, and this will be e one square. So the lengths of these, what are the fractions of these different colors? Sort of give values of the squares of these. So we'll stop here for today. So in today's class, we looked at how to correspond with different solutions to this beautiful problem with real experiment. Thank you.